I've been trying to get to the bottom of the question, why do we like card games? And more specifically, why do I like card games? Recently, I have been super addicted to Bellatro, the game that got snubbed for game of the year last year and also got a Peggy 18 rating slapped on top of it for references to gambling, even though FIFA, the soccer game, has actual for money gambling in it and it can be sold to kids. Anyways, I've been playing a lot of Bellatro and I've been, ooh, I've been enlightened by this game. Art imitates life and life imitates Bellatro. Playing cards, Bellatro figurines. Casinos, ranked Bellatro. Slay the Spire, that's Jimbo free Bellatro. And then you have PVP Bellatro, which is card jitsu from Club Penguin. Club Penguin shut down in 2017, but while it was online, it was a social space where kids could interact with other kids as penguins. They could play mini games and customize everything about their penguin, their igloo, and their pet puffles. What's crazy is just how committed the developers were to making this game kid friendly. You can't swear, you can't even allude to anything adult without being banned. It's so intense that there is a speed running category for Club Penguin bans. Card Jitsu was one of the mini games on the island. Card Jitsu launched in November of 2008 after a bunch of penguins dug out the dojo. It had a ranking system, alternate versions with their own more complex mechanics, and a physical run of trading cards. I had some back in the day, and if I can find them, I will put footage on top of my face right now. Now, Card Jitsu on its own is a very simple game. It's somewhat akin to rock, paper, scissors. Each card has an element and a number, and comparing these decides the hand. Fire will beat snow, snow beats water, and water beats fire. If both cards have the same element, we compare numbers, higher numbers beat lower numbers, and if the numbers are also a tie, the hand is a draw. Score is kept in the top corners of the game screen, and you win in one of three ways. Either you win hands of all three elements, you win three hands of the same element with different colored cards, or you play a power card which disables an element for your opponent's next hand while your opponent only has cards of that element which causes them to default. I didn't even know that third one was a real thing until I read the wiki researching for this video. <laughs> so I just finished writing and recording pretty much this whole video and i realized when i was getting b-roll footage of actual card jitsu gameplay from this video i missed something i'm not gonna go back and change everything just because it is the day before i want this video out but i missed the clause there are three ways to win a match first players can have the same type of card snow water fire but in three different colors <coughs> in my version you just have to get three different elemental wins you don't have to have three different colors. Uh, probably should have added that in. Didn't. Not gonna. Too much work. Uh, so that is one flaw with all of this. Anyways, back to the video. <laughs> Some other details. There's only six card colors. Cards can only have numbers between two and 12. Power cards will always have numbers nine or higher, and they are indicated by a glow effect around the edges of the card. So let's make some of these. I opened up Photoshop and I made a base card shape, a border, a panel which will overhang the middle so we can put the element and the number on it and a back to the card. I assembled them in a Godot scene using Sprite 3D nodes and I wrote a script which will hold information about the card and will set it up automatically. And I pulled images for the elements and the numbers from the Card Jitsu wiki. I load them all into a singleton when the application starts and I put them on the faces of the card when each card is created. I also added a glow shader which is based off of this shader. It's going to indicate if the card is a power card or not. It also only shows from the front so we can hide a hand by facing the cards down. We should probably change the assets out because they're from the original game. I replaced the numbers with the font Impress BT and I made some new elemental icons. The fire icon is from Wikipedia Commons and it looks a lot like the Kurjitsu fire icon already. The snowflake is from Flat Icon and for the water, I took this texture and I stamped a circle out of it and horribly attempted to make waves on the top. I'm not an artist. I'm a programmer. <laughs> Are these icons as cool as the original? God, no. But they will put some distinction between this project and the original game. So what do we put in this white space? I could theoretically just take the art assets from Club Penguin or AI generate a hundred different images and burn down the rest of the Amazon, but I don't really like either of those options. One big issue with this project is that the Club Penguin art style is two dimensional and it works very well in 2D, but when translated to 3D, it just doesn't look as great. We saw this in Club Penguin Island. It just could not replicate the success of the original Club Penguin. And I'm not gonna pin that all on the art style. It 
also could have been that the game was basically just a big advertisement for other Disney properties. I digress. I don't really know what to put here. I want to do something that uses 3D since the cards are already in 3D. Maybe put some little scenes inside them or something. I don't know. If you have ideas, drop them in the comments. And if you create something, put that in my Discord. Uh, whatever you make is probably going to be a lot better than anything I can do. Unfortunately for today though, this space is just going to stay empty. Okay, so how are we going to take these cards and turn them into something that we can actually play? Since the score is not a simple number, I started by making a score keeper. The score keeper holds panels, which indicate scored cards. I built a class, which lets us add scored cards to this keeper and store the score in a frame. A frame is a snapshot of the score. It's basically a dictionary that maps elements to lists. And in these lists, we can save which cards of that element have been scored by the player. If all three elemental lists have a length greater than zero, that's a win. And if a specific elemental list has cards of three different colors, that's also a win. I'm not gonna implement the power card lockout win by default mechanic since I don't plan on making power cards in this video. But if this video does numbers, I am more than willing to come back to this project and add power cards or something else. I don't know. But power cards are the thing that you can yell at me about. Okay, so now we need cards to actually score with. I created a card info resource and I made one of these resources for every card in set one, except for the customizer penguin cards. It took a while. It took a while, but at least it's only 94 cards. I just really hate data entry. I load all these card info resources into the application on startup and the game manager will create shuffled decks from these card info resources. We can then pull information from these cards and display them on the screen. I made a forwards facing larger hand for the player's cards since we're going to need to actually see them and click on them and a backwards facing smaller hand for the opponent's cards since we don't need to see them we just need to see when one has been selected. I made an animation that raises a card when it's selected and I made it so that only one card can be selected per played hand. Now we need to actually compare these cards in combat. I made a combat component which replaces the selected cards with copies and translates those copies to the center of the screen, flipping the opponent's card. This way we don't need to pass actual 3D objects around between the hands and the combat component, we can just pass their info resources. After we bring the cards to the center, we compare the card's elements and numbers from their card info resources to determine who wins the hand, and then we can add that card to the winner's score. Finally, we can pull in new cards for the hands, which means that we have a working gameplay loop. I still have to pick cards for both the player and the opponent, but it is technically working. I also made it so that if you haven't picked a card and the timer runs out, the first card in your hand is automatically chosen so the game can technically play itself if you just let it run and really trust your luck. You could do that, but I think it would be nice to play against an actual opponent. I didn't feel like implementing netcode or finding opponents to play against over the internet, so I settled for making you play against the computer. I guess I could have trained a machine learning model on like a million games of Karjitsu and then make it generate a neural network that just chooses cards for the AI opponent, but that's that's way too complex for this, so I just made an AI that chooses random cards. And ultimately that leaves the game up to a huge element of chance. It's really good for the gambling feeling, but it's really, really bad for the feeling of strategic accomplishment. It feels good to win hands, but there's no feeling of overcoming a challenge when it's all luck. We need an AI opponent that can think. You know, the intelligence part of artificial intelligence. Luckily, since we set it up so that the scorekeepers store score frames, the AI can use these frames to make decisions about which card to play. I wrote a bunch of helper functions to check if a frame meets a win condition, to check if the player is close to an elemental or a color win. I wrote some filters that grab cards by element or by number and a function to return which element beats a given one. And I used those to build this decision tree. First, if the AI has a card that can win the game, play it. Second, if the player is close to an elemental win, play a card of the element that is stronger than the one that the player needs to win, meaning that it beats it out elementally. Three, if the player is close to a color win, play a card which blocks the element that they need. And four, if neither the AI nor the player is close to winning, just play a random card. And this feels so much better. It took me a while to win consistently against this AI after I changed it. Since you actually have to strategize a bit on top of getting lucky, there's this definite sense of accomplishment that I get for overcoming the AI blocking my cards and actually winning the match. You have to kind of bait the AI into losing. We have a card game now. So what makes a card game feel good? I don't wanna be that guy. Like this is cool but it's not necessarily fun. The neurons that activate 
when you're gambling are, are nice. It's a thrill, but it can get kind of boring on its own. If you introduce elements of strategy, which let you get an edge on your opponent, it feels even better. I'd call this skewed chance, personally, giving the player mechanics which increase their odds if they're understood correctly, and that way they can better control moves rather than just clicking on things and praying that it was the right one. It makes smaller gambles more consistently positive and the payoffs from larger gambles more rewarding. I found myself cheering more when my hands won. I'll attribute it to that feeling of accomplishment, feeling like I outsmarted the computer. Okay, so this is more fun. This is The AI opponent is a lot better when it's not just slinging random cards, but it still doesn't feel like a game. Right now, this feels like a simulation and we're gonna need to give it some actual personality. In game development, there's this concept called juice. Juice is a bunch of little things that don't change anything mechanically, but add to the overall feeling of the game. And on top of making the game feel like a game, in card games or really any game of chance, juice is also the hype. Think the flame effects, the cards dinging, or the shepherd's tone in Bellatro as your hand plays out. It's the things that build that sense of anticipation and trigger a sense of relief or dread at the outcome. Now. In Card Jitsu, there isn't a series of things that build the score. It's really just the comparison of cards. So there's only so much that we're gonna be able to do here. We can at least make the game feel better to play and find small ways to build intensity. The first course of action, I'm really tired of looking at the Godot default skybox. So I downloaded the Kenny Holiday pack and I built a little scene to put behind the cards. It's a bit basic, but hopefully you won't be spending too much time looking at the background. You'll be spending your time playing the cards. Second. The UI is a little bit bland. I found a wooden plank texture and I'm using it for the buttons and the panels. This got me to finally try customizing a UI skin or like the theme in Godot and the theme editor is fucking sweet. I didn't need any tutorials. Uh, maybe that's a little bit of a brag, but everything was exactly where I expected it. It all just made sense to use. It feels reassuring that I can build UI using the built-in nodes and just attach a theme resource to them and change it all later. I don't have to worry about UI theming before building anything. I also made it so that the buttons get larger when you hover over them with the mouse, which makes them feel much more dynamic and instantly conveys that you can interact with them. Third, I added a hover effect to the cards. This is basically just the hover effect from Bellatro, but it's done by actually rotating the cards rather Rather than using a shader like the other recreations that I've seen. Fourth, I added a bunch of new animations. Some of them are actual animation player animations like drawing and picking cards, but most of it's just tweens, like the card picking timer that comes in from the side of the screen, button hovering, the score panels moving th from the position of the card that won the hand. Those are all tweens. I also made it so that the winning card gets larger and then when a draw occurs, the cards kind of just shrug, which I think is pretty funny. All of that so far has been visual stuff, the game is still silent. So let's fix that by adding some sound effects. I added effects for drawing a card, picking a card to play. When an outcome is decided, there's an effect when you start the game and one when you end the game, just to indicate that it is over. There's always more to add, but these at least get it to the point where it feels like a game. On the sound note though, we could benefit from some music. I took some songs from the Ovani Sound Humble Bundle I got a while back, specifically from the Japanese pack that was in it. I took three different versions of a song for the game music, and I took a track for the title screen music. I don't know if I can call them friends of the show, but I use their music in most of my videos, and when I directly shouted them out, they commented on the video, so if you're watching this, Hi. Lastly, I also made it so that the AI takes a random amount of time to choose a card. It never takes more than six seconds, so you're not really waiting too long. And as the game goes on, the choices take less and less time. This subtly builds stakes as the game gets longer and longer. Even though the overall time that you have to pick cards stays the same, having your opponent choose cards quickly, it just feels like it puts extra pressure on you. And so it adds that small sense of intensity to your decision making. That's everything I put into the game. If you want to play it, I put a build on my itch.io page and the source code's on my Patreon. Links to both of those are going to be in the description. If you want to watch a whole other video of me making a game just to test something out, this video I made an entire game using nothing but post-processing, which is kind of interesting. Anyways, I'll see you soon. Peace.